All right, guys, uh, it's Roman. You might know me as the Bauer, and we're here at uh, Gamescom 2022 in uh, the ASUS area. ASUS launched a lot of uh, mainboards yesterday. You've probably seen some of these online already on several news outlets, but I think that's the first time that they're presented physically. It was also the first time for me that I saw a retail board with heatsink. Uh, some of you might know that I often early get access to things for helping with development and stuff. And then also, I also only get the board naked without, without heatsink. So this was also the first time for me seeing them physically with the heatsink. Especially, let's talk about the gene first, because that's something quite exciting, I think, for the SUS and AM5. Because it's the first time that the SUS has an AMD board that is called a gene. It's also a one DIMM per channel board, which is also a bit uh, special for AMD when it comes uh, to those kind of overclocking boards. I think we could see more boards like this in future, but this will depend on how much access the mainboard vendor can get to the, the memory controller of the CPU. So that seems to be a challenge a bit right now to get the, the access to improve these things. But you can see because the gene exists, it will definitely make a difference. So overclocking, especially memory wise, will be improved here. That's why the gene should be very exciting. What I personally also like, we can take this off quickly, is the Gen Z.2 connector, previously known as M.2 or like the DIM.2 connector. Previously it was also just a normal DDR4 DIM slot. And now they made a special connector. They're calling it Gen, Gen Z.2. You have this tiny connector and it's basically an adapter for two M.2 drives. And what I really like about this is that the one you have sitting on the right is just a massive heat pipe cooler with tiny fans. So this should give you very good temperatures even if it's like a high load PCIe 5.0 SSD then this should give you very very good temperatures on your SSD. Temperature wise, uh, also talking about the VRM, on most of the boards, well, depending on the board, we have 20 or 22 phases for CPU supply. Uh, that splits up, obviously, in V-Core and then some of like Uncore voltage, uh, iGPU voltage. So you have this split up. But in general, we have a huge amount of phases on those boards. And that should already give you an idea because obviously I cannot spoiler any performance numbers. But this should also give you an idea that this platform is going to be a bit more challenging when it comes to power. We already know that AMD announced official support for 170 watt TDP and obviously you know how it works. If it's TDP then during peak load you can probably expect higher numbers to frame it like that. So that's the gene and then obviously the extreme would be something we can also talk about. So I think we'll just hop over there and grab it quickly. So this would be the extreme and uh, so that would be my, my go-to board for any kind of like LN2 overclocking. Uh, you have a ton of features which I'm really happy about that finally made it also to AMD because previously most of these features they have been existing for so many years on Intel platform and to me it often felt like AMD is getting neglected somehow like for whatever reason it's sometimes felt to me that AMD is getting the worst ports to say it like that and th this has just everything you would need like you have voltage measurement points up here to measure all the different voltages you want to check. Obviously your start button, that's something, it's not really special, but on the bottom, if we take it out quickly to film it a little bit easier, I think. So you also have those features like upping and uh, downing B-clock. So that's something you usually don't find on AMD boards. So B-clock buttons, you have a reserved switch, slow mode switch, um, you have the retry button, safe boot button, slow mode button. So there, there's a lot of features that finally also made it to all the AMD boards. Obviously some of them already existed on like previous Crosshair, Dark Hero for example. And talking about the Dark Hero, that's something a lot of people are also interested in because we spoiled it at a press conference already. You know on the Dark Hero we had the dynamic OC switcher which allowed to keep the AMD boost, the stock boost let's say of the 5950X with 4.9 gigahertz and at the same time have multi-threaded overclocking if it surpasses a certain threshold and then it was often a complaint from user and I totally give you that and I'm very happy that ASUS finally listened and put this on the entire lineup basically there's some like cheap entrance boards that will not have it but everything that's going to be like a Strix or RG board they will have the OC switcher and I'm very happy about that so you don't have to buy the most expensive board 
to get, in my opinion, probably the most important feature to get your AMD to run, uh, to get your AMD CPU to run more efficiently, to get more power out of it. To get more power out of it, there's also one more thing we can talk about, that's uh, the Ryzen Core Flex feature. It's something I tried to explain briefly also in a press conference, uh, but there's something you can go, you can really go deep down into the rabbit hole with this feature. Basically, you have different algorithms you can set in the mainboard BIOS. And you can determine different values. Just one example I really like to give first to understand how it works. You have three different levels you can define. And then, for example, if you have an AIO, like say a 240 AIO, and you define up to 70 degrees Celsius core temperature, the CPU can draw as much power as it wants. And then at a certain point, your AIO might be saturated temperature-wise. And then you say up, let's say maybe 85 degrees Celsius, from that point on, you want to decrease the power consumption a little bit, maybe to like 150 watt. And then this way your AIO can cool down a bit until it reaches certain temperature and then you can increase the, the value again. You have different levels you can set. And that's the same for different parameters. So it's not only the like temperature and wattage, but you can also define that if the CPU stays below, let's say, 60 watt, you can also increase the B clock by 2 megahertz, for example. So if it's staying really low power and you might want to utilize high single threaded load, then you can also do that by doing maybe B clock because it's using an external B clock on those boards. Which means that whenever those 2 megahertz would be used, it's only adjusting the CPU core frequency, right? It will leave alone all the other components. It's not like in the past where everything was tied together. That's why you can utilize the external clock gen for this. So that's going to be really interesting. You can define um, EDC, for example. EDC is uh, the current for AMD, for the AMD CPU. So let's say uh, at a different temperature or at even a different voltage, you can say if my CPU is staying under a certain voltage, then just go full out on the current. But if it's maybe on a higher voltage, then just use less current. So there's so many things you can tune. It's like voltage, current, wattage, uh, temperature, um, like clocks, like a B clock, for example. So there's so many things you can define to just make your CPU run perfect under all the conditions. It's something you can, you can spend way too much time on. So usually you get lost and then it's like, uh, yeah, this, did this even help or uh, am I just going back? So there's so much you can try, but that's, that's something I like because you just have the options to try it. You have the options to try it. And that's, I think, those two features are going to be really exciting, at least for ASUS AM5 boards from my side. So that's something I'm really happy about. There's a question I often get asked. It's like, which board would you pick to get the best performance, both for, like, let's say, daily overclocking and even extreme overclocking? And I can tell you the base of all these boards is pretty much the same. So let's say you have the same VRM base, no matter if it's in Hero, if it's in Extreme, if it's in Gene. And overclocking wise, you should reach the same kind of frequency range on all of these boards. They are just different in the type of features they are packed with. As I said before, the Extreme has all the Extreme overclocking features, but the Gene also already has a ton of these features. So you don't have to go and, and get the Extreme. You can also just get the Hero or the Gene because the base is going to be the same. You will, as, especially for daily overclocking, you should like get the same clocks on all of these boards. So you just go by the features you need of the board and not just by like the price and like, yeah, that's the most uh, expensive board. It has to be the best. That's not the case. You can just reach the same kind of clocks on the Hero as what you can get on the Extreme, especially for daily.